Hey, this is Dan. Welcome to Weld Fever. Today we're going to do some stick welding, and the emphasis today is on practicing vertical in order to pass a structural plate test. So stick with me. Here we go. Okay, so now I want to talk about body positioning when you're going to weld a vertical uh, joint of any kind. Uh, basically the way I was taught and the way I feel most comfortable is for the top of your piece to be about level with the top of your chest. So you see here if you were to draw an imaginary line from the top of this it would come about to the top of my chest here. Uh, the bottom, if it's not too long a piece, hopefully it's within that range as well. But the reason for having this all the way at the top, I'll go ahead and put a an electrode in the stinger here so you can see I like to hold this at an angle when we come in here my arm if you notice my right my right arm here is at a pretty comfortable position to start as I move up my arm continues to go up and it remains at a comfortable position all the way to the very top of the weld for me to be at this position and this is actually the termination of the weld is still very comfortable if this were any higher, now my arm would have to be way up here, and now I'm really depending upon my shoulder to have to lift up to get to that height. Now what we're going to go ahead and do, now that we've gotten all set up, I'm going to go ahead and lay down my first weld here, and let's see how it goes. Okay, we're going to begin by welding on a cruciform. For those of you who watched my last video, you'll know exactly what that is, and if you haven't seen it, please make sure to check it out after this one. I'm going to initiate the arc by doing a scratch start, which is basically uh, a scratch motion, much like lighting a wooden match. Um, and now I'd like to point out that uh, this video is in real time. I have not slowed down the video at all, though it may appear that way because I'm going so slow. Um, it's very important to take your time on this uh, vertical type of weld, and it's very important that you do a very slight left and right motion not a weave exactly but just a little bit take your electrode and go a little bit left and a little bit right and hold on each side when you do so uh, the reason for that is it washes the molten metal into the sides of your plate and that will help in preventing undercut undercut for those of you who are not familiar is a gouging of the side of the plate uh, and when it's left unfilled it's definitely a cause for a potential failure in a welding test so you really definitely want to prevent undercut as much as possible you'll notice the degree of my angle of electrode is at about by this point it's about 15 degrees ideal is between 5 and 15 degrees I started a little bit uh, a little bit steeper than that but anyway okay now I've taken the lens off primarily so that you can see that uh, number one we're halfway through the weld number two that the uh, slag there is forming a very nice even beaded kind of a look uh, when you see that kind of an even bead on a vertical uh, application you'll know that uh, you're doing pretty well on your weld. I think it'll be successful it's a good indicator and also for you to take a look at my body position my arm is still tucked in I'm still holding tight and uh, when I terminate this weld you're gonna notice that I go up and over the top and to the rear of the plate behind it. Uh, you definitely don't want to terminate by pulling back towards you. If you do that the arc will follow you and there's a very good likelihood that if you have a lot of molten heated hot metal and you pull towards you that arc is going to follow you as well as molten metal will follow you and then you'll end up with a very ugly very bad looking drip of metal at the very top of your weld okay the slag removed very easily which is a good sign and uh, upon closer inspection there is no undercut and it looks like a pretty darn good weld so we're ready for the next bead so for this second pass here I'm gonna go ahead and speed it up because I think we've already kind of uh, shown uh, the actual welding part I will say that on this second pass at the beginning my angle of my electrode is a little steep uh, I think I should have leveled it out just a bit more uh, but overall this pass went in well uh, you can't tell from the heightened speed here but I did take my time I went really slowly and burned into the edges 
and here when I remove the slag you can see the result uh, looks pretty good so now I'm gonna go into the third pass and here I really have a steep angle way too steep um, don't know what happened maybe I it was just because the slat the uh, metal was built up a little bit too close to the edge and uh, whatever the case by the end of the weld I did uh, get the angle where I needed it to be so that worked out a little better and now this part here I uh, purposely brought down to regular speed because this is the payoff here when you can take the slag off and it comes off so nice and easily uh, particularly on vertical and uh, you've got that to show for it that's definitely the payoff that you did a great job and uh, I'm quite pleased with it okay so here is the end result of those three passes uh, obviously we had the root pass we had one pass on the left and one pass on the right I'm gonna zoom into this so you can see it a little bit better keep in mind this is vertical uh, and I'll uh, go up and down here um, you know overall I'm pretty happy with this uh, obviously you know nothing is entirely perfect we have a little bit of scalloping uh, I would have loved to have this a little bit flatter but as most of you know who have done uh, vertical it's not always uh, entirely uh, possible to eliminate all the scalloping and all the little bumpiness along the way but this is this particular area right here if you can see it I'm getting as close as I can without going overboard here this is a really a good area because as you can see there is flatness throughout um, this is probably the best spot on the whole uh, plate here there's no undercut here there's no undercut there this bead and this bead both fused in really nicely it's flat right across in this area so this is probably the most perfect spot I would think of this whole weld even a uh, slightly above it you got a little bit of a scalloping here but even though it doesn't look perfect right there the weld is good it's fused together well there's no uh, real undercut on the side here uh, believe it or not it's a little bit shallower a little bit uh, uh, not as built up here as below and on top and so it maybe has the appearance of it could be a little bit of a, a, a undercut but actually in close inspection it's not undercut and all up in here as well everything is good and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for good fusion into the sides throughout. Let me pan back a little bit. Uh, good fusion along both sides. No undercut. For those of you who don't understand what undercut is, it's basically um, almost self-explanatory. When you see it, you'll know. It's like it's a digging or a gouging into the side, a cutting into the side. And the reason why it, it happens is because you go over the plate either too fast or your amperage is too way too hot and you're just gouging out rather than filling in. Uh, so that's, uh, that's where we're at. Okay, that's it for this one. Thanks for joining me. Hey, I hope you guys uh, pick something up on this. I know that when I was about to do my structural plate test, I looked to YouTube to get some tips and some tricks on uh, how to... Uh, properly use 7018 even just watching the positioning of it watching how somebody else ran it was enough to help me out um, but I will say this there's no substitution for practice so get out there and practice 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 run 7018 until your arm falls off literally because there's no better way to learn how to do this than to actually go out and do it even if you're not quite sure what you're doing experiment with settings experiment with uh, uh, different kind of rods uh, just go for it until you get it and believe it or not it'll come okay don't forget to rate and subscribe to my channel keep your eye out for the next one hopefully I'll be trying to get one to you once a week now so take care we'll see you on the next one bye bye